So Billy Donovan calls for Patrick Williams to be consistently aggressive. We're going to talk about that, and then we will get into the Chicago Bulls versus the 76ers tonight. You know we're going to jump right into it, but you got to hear the music first. Cognac, yeah. Shy Boys Podcast with the Cognac Boys. I'm Cognac Boy Bobby, and I'm holding it down on another episode of Shy Boys Podcast today. Make sure you go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell as well. Let's get into it. But, hey, we know that Patrick Williams, man, he has had that reputation and that nickname put out there of being called Passive P. But in the last few games, we have seen a different Patrick Williams. We've seen a little bit of more emotion. We've seen a little bit more aggressiveness. We've seen Patrick Williams start to find his footing and, you know, be a better player within the role that has been given to him. The boys are five and three in their last eight games, and he has been a huge part of that. His last game against the Miami Heat, he had one of his best games of the season, to be honest with you. Came out there, had 28 points, seven rebounds, and four assists. If we round it every year, though, looking at everything. And then in the last eight games, including the Miami Heat game, Patrick Williams is averaging 14 points, five rebounds, and two assists while getting that three point shot under control and averaging 41% from the three and being very, very consistent from the field with 50%. And that's the guy that we've been asking for for a while now. Billy Donovan is somebody who believes that Patrick Williams has all the tools to attain steadiness in his craft. That's coming from Billy Donovan. And I agree with that. I do believe that Patrick Williams has the tools, has the attributes, but it was all about putting it together. We I don't know what has been the major contribution to that. Maybe player personnel moving out the way or maybe, you know, just a, a, a change in mindset for Patrick Williams or the coaching staff and players getting on his ass. But I love what I've been seeing out of Patrick Williams. My guy has that in and out dribble that has been vicious. We seen Patrick Williams uh, catch a body not too long ago. We seen Patrick Williams be consistently good from the three. We seen him even get up and then grab some big man rebounds. Only thing is, we want this guy to establish this and do this consistently for the sake of the Bulls and their future. I know that when we talk, uh, so Billy Donovan went ahead. And, uh, you know, when you look at one of the quotes from uh, Sports Illustrated that came out in regards to what Billy Donovan was saying, he said he had this to say in regards to Patrick Williams. He said, with younger players, you don't want to play in a wide gap where there are these drastic differences. Whether he makes shots or misses shots, it's the aggressiveness. And he clearly, on Thursday night, wasn't as aggressive as he was Saturday. And we got to get him to be consistent doing that. He's got to own that. When he does what we do on what we did on Saturday, he's a huge boost to our team. But you want to stay away from those large gaps where it's like, who are we getting night to night? Patrick can control that force and aggressiveness. That's all we need consistently from him. And I think he's capable of doing that. And I'm with you. I'm with you. Because at some point, bro, the bib got to come off. You know what I'm saying? You got to get rid of the bookie or the binky or whatever you call the pacifier, you know, when you talk to your kids. You got to get rid of that with Patrick Williams. Me and C-Dub, we came into this season and pretty was like, hey, there's no more coddling Patrick Williams. There's no more holding his hands. At some point, this little guy, the this little baby has to eventually start to crawl and then eventually start walking. You know what I'm saying? So, and I hope that was, wasn't too bad of an analogy, but y'all get the point. We cannot baby Patrick Williams. He's been in this position long enough now. It's time to see him produce. And that's what we've been seeing. At least I can give you a, not just the last eight games, probably about the last 10, probably even more. You've seen him start to come around and have a greater effect on a basketball game when the Chicago Bulls are playing. But I also think that when it comes to keeping Patrick Williams engaged, you have to let him touch the ball. You have to allow him to be active on the offensive side. You got to be able to let, you know, provide support to him on a defensive side that'll help, you know, create opportunities for him, you know, to, you know, get deflections, 
be able to be in position to get defensive rebounds. And then when you do turn those balls over, you got to be able to move up the court and tell that young fella to run. He's young. He ain't tired, man. He ain't tired. So you got to put that young fella out there and let him run. And he got to go out there and be able to accept the challenge and be able to come through for the Chicago Bulls, be able to be a player that's going to produce. And it's not going to always be in the score box when you look at the box score. He can definitely affect the game in other ways, just like Billy Donovan painted out for Patrick Williams. Patrick Williams, if your shot is not falling on a, on a specific night, you can always turn on that defensive hat, put the defensive hat on, and be more of a defensive guy. Let me go out here and create things with things that I can't control. Sometimes you can't control that the ball is going in and out when you're shooting the ball. That's just how the ball bounced that way. You know what I'm saying? That particular game. But what you can control, you can go out there and give effort. You can go out there and show heart. You can go out there and play hard on every possession. You can go out there and do other things to affect the game. You can create for others now. Oh, Kobe White has it going right now. Hey, I don't have it going. My shot's not falling. Let me figure out a better way so me and Kobe White can run this two-man action not get him the ball. Or, hey, DeMar DeRozan right now is cooking in this third or fourth quarter. Hey, let me go ahead and make sure I'm clearing out my guy. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not bringing extra defenders over to DeMar DeRozan. Oh, and when those shots go up, when you talk about DeMar DeRozan or Kobe White, you say, hey, let me get my nose up in here and let me go ahead and try to get a big man rebound to help my team earn another possession in this tight game. It's a lot of ways that he can affect it. It's not going to always have to come. It's not going to always have to be a scoring output. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to talking about Patrick Williams. So Billy Donovan calling for him to be more uh, consistently aggressive. I'm all for it. That's what we all expect Patrick Williams to do. And I hope that, and I'm pretty sure he's a smart guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure he's a hard worker. I'm not, I'm not going to question that. It's all about consistency when it comes down to Patrick Williams. And I believe he's very, very capable. I just want to see, I want to continue to see him do this. And this is something I've been kind of asking since last year. Look, I'm not expecting you to go out and average 20 points per game right now. But can you be consistently good enough to where those 20 point games or you get close to those 20 points, those start to come more often. Every so many games you see Patrick Williams put up an 18 point, 20 point, or even a 25 point, like, you know, things like that. If, if you can be consistent, you know, when it comes to what your stat line is going to look like, eventually you're going to have some, you know, some nights to where you move that peak up a little bit. It's not just at a plateau or it's flatlining. You get you get that like EKG machine type thing where you get the boop. You know what I'm saying? And that peak hits up. Boom. Patrick Williams just dropped 20 points today. But, hey, that's all I got to say about Patrick Williams. Hey, shout out to him. Shout out to the coaching staff right now. I got to show a little bit of love. I know we don't like Billy Donovan that much, but I got to show him a little bit of love because he has been consistent along with the other young guys. But now we move on. We look into tonight's game versus the 76ers. Oh, my goodness. My, my, my goodness. Joel Embiid has the Chicago Bulls number. That's the one. That's number one. Let's get that out the way. Let's talk about it. Joel Embiid is 13 and one versus the Chicago Bulls in his career right now. If I'm the Chicago Bulls head coach, as soon as we sit down or when we was going through walkthroughs, maybe the night before, or when we come through for shoot around this morning, I'm writing 13 and one <laughs> somewhere. I'm posting signs that, you know what I'm saying, to try to do something to motivate my guys to where they be like, all right, we want this game a little bit more. We're going to come out and play a little bit harder. We're going to come out together and band together and communicate on defense and make sure that we make it, uh taking good shots and be hot enough to keep those shots falling. Joel Embiid against the Chicago Bulls is averaging 28 and 11. 28 and 11. And man, Nikola Vucevic got his job cut out for him tonight. I will expect that he might be in some foul trouble. So I would expect some uh, Andre Drummond on him as well to try to neutralize him because you ain't going to stop him, but you can try to slow him down. But it's going to be interesting to see. I know the Chicago Bulls with them and, you know, being able to move the pace a little bit more, being able to create more open through more three point shots. They have a they have an opportunity right here in front of us. But the Sixers ain't no slouch. Nick Nurse 
has Billy Donovan's, you know, if he ain't got his number, he definitely walking up to the door when it comes to coaching against Billy Donovan because we know how Nick Nurse loved to coach against Billy Donovan when he was a coach for the Toronto Raptors. So Billy Donovan, we got to get ready to see him and how he's going to play this chess match with Nick Nurse because Nick Nurse is always throwing different things at Billy Donovan that's going to force Billy Donovan to adjust. We'll see if he can adjust, and then we'll see how the players perform tonight. One of the most things I'm excited about tonight, though, is the matchup by Tyreek Maxey and Kobe White. Jacoby White. This look, I'm not saying that these guys are on the same level at uh, same level as of right now, but I believe the storylines kind of correlate a little bit. You see this young bud and player. You look at Tyreek's Max. You see this young bud and player. He's making strong strides. Superstar alongside of him, James Harden, moves out the way. Boom. This nice little flower begins to blossom. Tyreek's Maxi is on his way to stardom. Kobe White, we look at him. You see him struggle a little bit. Last year, we seen him be more consistent. And, you know, toward, you know, back that towards that, like the third of the season and on. To where he was sitting in a chair defensively and he started to come on offensively. Boom. Then he starts get him get himself in a situation to where he could be the starting point guard. It's still a little bit shaky with Zach Levine in there. Zach Levine gets injured. We starting to see this flower bud. It ain't bud all the way, but we starting to see it bud. And we could potentially see Kobe White on his way to stardom. That's why I can't wait to see Tyreek's Maxi versus Kobe White because Tyreek's Maxi is on his way to stardom and Kobe White can be looking at that and be like, I can be, you know, in a similar conversation of that guy. Tyreek's Maxi is going to challenge Kobe White going downhill and from the three-point line. Kobe White on his side can challenge Tyreek's Maxi going downhill and from the three-point line. And let's see who's going to be the better defender tonight. I believe it's going to be a solid matchup. Obviously, it's the Bulls versus the Sixers, but I'm going to be watching closely Tyreek's Maxi versus Kobe White. Y'all let me know down below who y'all got to win this game. Right now, I'm a little nervous. I ain't got too much uh, positivity for Chicago sports right now, if I'm being honest. But y'all know I love my Bulls. I'm going to root for them, but I think this is going to be a tough matchup. We shall see what happens. But that's it for me today. Make sure you're following the show at Shy Bulls Podcast. And then we on Cognac Boys on all social media platforms. If you want to call in and leave your take or give your thoughts on what the Chicago Bulls are looking like, call in 773-242-9219. It's another episode of Shy Bulls Podcast. I'm Bobby. I'm going to catch y'all on the next one for sure. Cognac. Cognac. Gang!